hard not to make a joke out of that. And you know, the one thing I got told was don't listen to all the advice. Always. <laughs> <you know. laughs> this video is being sponsored by our friends at GPU Audio, who are about to release their free plugin suite for Mac OS. More from me in a bit. We always ask people who come on tape notes um, a few questions. One is about a piece of kit or equipment or an instrument, something that either this record couldn't have been made without or just you cannot exist without it. Well, I guess, I mean, I probably would have said something else before actually going through all those songs, but, you know, I seem to, I feel like I've just been talking about Echoplex for the last <laughs> three songs, so I guess I'll pick that one. I'll pick the, yeah, you know, Tape Delay, I think, is an obvious one for this record specifically. Um, you know, the imprint of it, the randomness of that world, and the rigidity of that world, you know, it kind of really forces, especially as a guitarist, it forces you to, um, it forces your pocket when you play but then it also can be yeah, a beautiful kind of um, serendipitous world where you're not in control and it's just a real real bastard to edit and that you know, <laughs> you, one one bad note goes on for a very long time <laughs> <laughs> and yes. what about yourself Nathan is there anything that you particularly can't work without yeah I did, well I just suddenly realized one of the the sort of main backing vocals um, effect we used on this was the H3000 uh, yeah like a, a stutter algorithm which is sort of it just does all these randomized um, sort of speeding up and slowing down and pitching up and and down kind of anything you feed into it and yeah I think we just ran all the backing vocals um, at a certain stage in the track through it and um, it kind of just arose just the same and I walk on, con, 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 does these kind of stereo effects as well, kind of. Come out in the rain. You just hope for it to be in key as much as possible. We just <laughs> did a lot of takes. Always it. record, yeah, sort of ten takes to get a good comp. But I've been using it loads. What's it called again? The H. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's an H three thousand Ultra Harmonizer, and I think it's like a mid eighties. Um, yeah, kind of. It's basically like a modulation box. Um, but yeah, I've been using that stutter algorithm a lot on on things, and it's um, it always gives you something eventually that's that's usable. <laughs> yeah, it so sounds great. Kind of hearing it panning from side to side mm, in yeah. the headphones there. Yeah, yeah, it sounds really cool. Another element that we're intrigued by is routine and habit. Things that you use to help you create. As I mentioned, GPU Audio are about to release their free plugin suite for Mac OS featuring classic modulation and time-based effects. Also, their first partner plugin with Vienna Symphonic Library will be out in a matter of weeks with more GPU accelerated plugins coming in the near future. Get the latest news and all their free plugins by heading over to gpu.audio forward slash tape notes. Links in the description below. Thanks to GPU Audio for supporting the show. So as a producer, Nathan, maybe there's a, a a regular approach or habit routine that you take when you're approaching any particular music or any particular project. Yeah, um, I mean, it's sort of coming back to what I was saying earlier about working with Ben and and his um, his kind of patience to let an idea flourish and develop. I think that's something that I've been sort of advising myself to do more of in in the last few years working with other people is is just listening really and and kind of rather than always jumping in with your what you would do just hearing other approaches and and letting those ideas you know grow and and become something and um yeah and that I guess not to the point where you completely lose your own vision but I just think that that is the spirit of sort of collaboration for me and that's yeah that's that's the sort of number one thing that that I think is has become part of my sort of 
aspirational routine anyway right right it's kind of a work in progress yeah yeah what about yourself ben i mean is it something that has evolved i mean do you think that say maybe maybe in the early days of when you were starting to learn the guitar and play the guitar you had certain routines that helped uh make progress with the instrument and then now you have a different approach i'd sort of say my route the routine that i've started to become aware of um you know that's quite i've realized over the years actually quite fundamental um to how i work is is actually being deliberately very lazy for a long time um you know and it's it just seems to be the way um i kind of store up information and energy um to like not to try and be entertained by a lot of things not to try and be kind of searching for inspiration constantly not be you know um not be giving yourself a really hard time as well because with that comes a real baggage and a weight of expectation and um uh you know and just and things and clutter so to try and be um you know a bit useless for a while and then so that by the time you do come to embark on you know that doesn't mean i'm not doing anything there's like you know i will be i don't not i do work a little bit but um i'm kind of gathering and then when i get to the studio i feel like i've yeah i'll purposely pick a time when i've kind of feel like i've yeah i've i feel like i've got enough energy and i've got enough um enough about me to and it, that comes from being lazy rather than being really prolific, <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, five, that's five albums routine. in, it's, <laughs> it's, it's going pretty well, this approach, I reckon. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so we always also seek advice from people. We wonder whether you have learned a lesson over time or you've been given some advice by somebody along the way. Hard not to make a joke out of that, and you know, the one thing I got told was don't listen to all the advice. Always, you know, <laughs> definitely pick and choose your advice that you're given. <laughs> that was that was quite a nice one. Um, I don't know. I think you know, go about things, uh, go about things your own way, and don't be distracted. Is always something that um, I've always felt kind of rang true for me. Um, yeah, slowly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think mine is is sort of about listening again and not actually not listening to too much other music. Um sort of in general for me, I've sort of found that um the less music I'm listening to while I'm working on my own music or producing for other people, the more I can sort of um just focus in on on that project and and not yeah not be distracted by thinking oh uh this this other mu- sort of contemporary music is is what i want to be doing and i you know I, I think that takes me away from sort of being present if i'm listening to to what my sort of peers are doing if that's if that's the word um but I think, yeah, I guess the danger in that is you become really self-referential. Yeah, you don't listen to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, I've, I've just had this recent discovery that I think I'm maybe referencing my own music in what I'm making <laughs> next, which is, it sort of feels very indulgent, but I thought that's just naturally where I'm going and I'm sort, I'm sort of embracing that and seeing what happens. It could lead to just... It could lead to something awful eventually. Giant but, feedback loop. Yeah, huge, yeah. But, but then if people like Ben are knocking on the door because of your work, you know, it's, yeah. they're, they're referencing it. So, you know, they're, they're coming to you for, for that reason in a way. But I guess yeah. like with all these things, you'll probably reach a point where you've had enough of that and, and completely yeah, change your it's approach. it's bound to be a phase. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think just recently I'm just enjoying, at the end of the day, leaving the studio and not listening to anything else. And that's that's quite sort of peaceful for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd definitely say that's an overlap with me as well. I don't listen to a lot of music when I'm making a record, for sure. Um, and, it, yeah, it's that thing of kind of sticking to your lane as well and not being not being saturated by... There's so much out there that kind of just pours into your world that, um, you know, it's uh, it's your world. Um, and it's, it's important to have those kind of boundaries of, like, how much how much information, how much, you know, music is uh, an information, how much of that you let in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think um, one thing I'd say was, you know, the record we made 
I'd gone in, you know, obviously big fan of Nathan. So the idea of making records probably similar to that of um, Westerman or Lando, you know, and like um, and really leaning on Nathan and you know we came up with a record that is again a kind of a different place again i think you always have these ambitions for a record to be something and they never they're never what you want them to be and you have to find a piece with that um sometimes it's for better sometimes it's for worse and um a lot of the times your expectations are um are tested and and troubled but you get to the end of it and what you've created is the point Ooh.